How did we get here? I don't know. We walked. No, I mean here. I mean like everything is mass produced. There are 7 billion people on earth and there are products for everyone. How do they make all that stuff? Okay, now I see what you're saying. Well, I got two words to answer your question. Chemical engineering. Don't get it? Let me take you on a journey through the history lane. Before 18th century, life was simple and compared to today, really inadequate. People were just born, lived in a farm, grew some crops and grew old and died. Then in 18th century, there came industrial revolution. Industries grew, with it grew demand for chemicals. People needed to manufacture chemicals like sulfuric acid or soda ash in a cost-effective way in huge amounts. But then, they only knew the chemistry, only knew how to make them in a laboratory by some common reactions. But to produce them in enough amount to sustain industries, how do you even do that? Where do you get the convenient raw materials? How do you transport them? Chemical engineering got its unofficial start when scientists tried to solve this problem. First came the Leblanc process to manufacture soda ash from salt. Then came solver process which was safer for the environment. Through these chemical processes, gradually a new kind of chemical engineering was being born. Then in the late 19th century entered George Davis who gave a series of lectures at the Manchester School of Technology. His talks formed the basis for his two-volume handbook of chemical engineering which was the first of its kind. It organized basic operations that are common to many industries like distillation or transporting liquids or gases. Any chemical engineers will likely have their education rooted in Davis's teachings. Then there came cars in 20th century and soon chemical engineers were playing an important role in their youth by making gasoline in large scale. As the years advanced, humanity saw that we need everything in large scale, not only some chemicals or gasoline. From food products and pharmaceuticals to polymers for packaging, everything needed to be mass produced in factories and for that chemical engineers introduced concepts like unit operations, designing factories then became easier and streamlined. Need to start a reaction? Go for a reactor. Need to separate them? Try distillation column. Want to dry something? Try evaporator. And all these operations are founded on some basic principles like mass transfer, heat transfer and thermodynamics. And the result? whole world full of products for our convenience and one product like this is an ice cream the manufacturing process of ice cream is broken down into seven steps raw material delivery and storage base mixing homogenization and pasteurization aging flavor addition and continuous freezing cartoning and finally hardening so let us see how it's done to make ice cream the first thing we need is fresh cream it is stored in refrigerated tanks usually at 4 degrees Celsius temperature then a high speed mixture blends the cream with other ingredients among the ingredients there are powder mills, sugar corn syrup and plant based stabilizers and emulsifiers after mixing for 3 minutes the mix is moved to pasteurization tanks using pumps heating the mix at 162 degrees Celsius temperature for 30 minutes kills bacteria and activates stabilizers the stabilizers prevent ice cream from crystallizing and emulsifiers help the mix to bond with air during homogenization. The homogenization breaks up fat globules giving the ice cream a smooth texture. Then the mixture is cooled and concentrated vanilla flavor is added. Finally the mixture is chilled and wet for about 15 seconds. This blends the mix with air. That is how ice cream is made. Then the ice cream is packed and stored in a cold storage at about minus 25 degrees Celsius temperature. So in this process, what kind of refrigeration cycle are we looking at? How should the warehouse be designed? How should wastewater be treated? How do we generate the low pressure steam that will be necessary for pasteurization? And not to mention the individual mixing, freezing, etc. processes. All these are concerns of a chemical engineer. So this is how chemical engineering basically structured the human life as it is. And presently it is doing much more, like biotech or computer chips or works in the field of environment or sustainable energy. And chemical engineers did all this with adequate safety measures by using safety equipment like hand gloves, safety masks, fume hoods, aprons and of course fast rate equipment. That's how only in the span of 200 years or so, chemical engineering made human life unimaginably better. Who knows what it will bring in the next 100 years. Maybe we will solve world hunger and poverty or minimize global warming. And then we will have the chemical engineers to thank. That's why be a chemical engineer. Be a part of the journey that the human race is taking towards its zenith.